Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be building something super cool, an electronic circuit that solves a really handy problem. So here's the problem. You know how sometimes the garage door under the house gets left open and nobody inside knows? Or when you want to go into the garage, you're not sure if it's already open or closed? You go all the way out to the garage only to find the door is closed. Well, we're going to build a circuit that tells us if the garage door is open by turning on a light inside the house. It uses a reed switch, a relay, and an LED. Simple. It's like magic, but with electronics. Let's start drawing our circuit. First, let me introduce the three main components. We've got a reed switch, an LED, and a relay. These are going to work together to let us know when the garage door is open or closed. First, we'll connect the coil of the relay to the reed switch through a power source. The reed switch will open or close based on the position of the garage door. Now the relay has three important terminals, a common terminal, a normally open terminal and a normally closed terminal. We'll focus on the normally closed terminal, which is connected to our LED through a power source and also connected to the common terminal on the relay. Here's how it works. When the reed switch is open, which means the garage door is open, even if it's only a little, the relay's coil isn't energized. That means the relay keeps the LED on to let us know the door is open. But when the reed switch closes, which happens when the garage door is closed, the coil gets energized and flips the relay. That turns the LED off. So when the coil is closed, the light turns off. All right, here's the completed circuit in Tinkercad. I've already put everything together so we can jump into testing. Before we run the simulation, let me explain a few things. First, we've drawn both power sources together into one system so their relay and LED can work off the same circuit. We'll be using 5 volt power source in a real build, but the closest option we could find in Tinkercad was 9 volt. To make sure we don't burn out the LED with that extra voltage, we've added a 350 ohm resistor to protect it. Now let's run the simulation and see how it works. As you can see, the garage door is open, the reed switch is open and the LED turns on. When the door cl closes, the reed switch closes, which en energizes the relay and the LED turns off. Perfect. Tinkercad also gives a schematic of the circuit. I've modified it a bit, but here's what it looks like if you want to follow it along and build it yourself. Next up, we're going to make the circuit on a breadboard. We'll start with a relay. This is a 5 volt relay we're going to use. If you look underneath, these two pins here are for the coil. This one here is the common terminal and these are the normally open and normally closed terminals. Now the common terminal doesn't connect easily to the breadboard, so I've soldered this black wire to make it fit. Let's place the relay into the breadboard and start connecting everything. We'll start at the common terminal on the relay. First, we connect it to the positive leg of the LED. So the common terminal and the LED are in the same row on the breadboard. Next, according to our circuit diagram, we connect the negative leg of the LED to a resistor. This will protect the LED from too much current. Now we take the other end of the resistor and connect it to the negative rail on the breadboard. From the same leg of the resistor, we'll run another wire to one of the coil pins on the relay. Now let's connect the other side of the coil to our reed switch. This reed switch closes the circuit when a magnet is near it, which will control our LED. Then we connect the other end of the reed switch to the normally closed terminal on the relay. One last step. We also run another wire from this side of the reed switch into the positive rail to complete the circuit. And there you have it, the circuit is complete. Now let's power it up and see how it works. When we energize the circuit, the reed switch is open, so the LED is on. But when we bring a magnet close to the reed switch, it closes and the LED turns off. That's it, now that we've tested the circuit on the breadboard, we're ready to solder it onto the permanent board. Yeah. 
The soldering is complete and everything is all set. Here you can see I've installed the LED into a battery powered remote which will be mounted inside the house. On the back side I've soldered the resistor in line to keep the board as simple and neat as possible. Both the reed switch and the LED are connected to this 4 pin connector which makes it super easy to plug into the PCB. Now we're powering up the board using a bow socket and USB power. Simple and efficient. Testing shows that when the reed switch is open, the LED lights up exactly as planned. Alright, now it's time to install everything in the garage. Up here on the rail, I've used some silicon to attach the reed switch. This keeps it secure but still easy to adjust if we need to. As you can see, when the garage door opens, the magnet moves away from the reed switch. Next we have the enclosure for our circuit. We'll be installing it next to the motor because we have easy access to power of circuit runs on 5 volt DC. I swapped out the 4 pin plug for these screw terminals because they work better for me. Over here on the left, I've connected the two wires from the reed switch. And on the right, we've got the positive and negative pins for the LED. Then I soldered the other ends of the wires to the LED in the remote in the house. Let's test it out. When the garage door opens, the relay switch activates and the LED lights up inside the house. When the door is closed, the LED is off. Just as we planned. Mission accomplished. And that's a wrap. We've built, tested and installed our garage door alert system. Thanks for joining me on this project. Don't forget to like, subscribe and stay tuned for more awesome builds. See you next time.